Welcome back, everybody, to uh, workshop number two, live and uncut workshop number two. Uh, thanks so much for everyone that watched last week. Uh, that was really great to see the number of the, not only watched the, the show live, but uh, also followed up on the YouTube and uh, checked the show out. So thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. Um, just a quick recap, uh, quite a few uh, comments I made with regards to cameras, the type of camera which I think you should be looking to get when you first start off. I didn't actually touch on sensor size. Uh, sensor size is something where we really do get into some, dare I say, nitty gritty of technology with what these cameras can produce for you. But suffice to say, there was a period of time where we did have a little bit of a pixel war from the main camera uh, manufacturers, namely Nikon and Canon. They consistently were pushing out cameras with more and more pixels, only to find that with more pixels, then they created more problems with noise. Now, this didn't happen with every camera, but it is something which was picked up by a number of users. So it was a question of where is the right level. Now, firstly, the right level is between 14 and 20 megapixels. The problem that is compound on top of that is the size of sensor. Now, we have full frame cameras, which are effectively the same size as a 35 millimeter negative, which you, if you're in the old film days, you would see that. So just one of those is effectively the equivalent of a 35, uh, of a full frame sensor. But a lot of cameras, when they originally started off, those sensors were too expensive to make. So they in actual fact created a smaller sensor, which they called a one and a half or 1.6 crop, depending on whether it was a Nikon or a Canon. And a lot of manufacturers have followed along that uh, line with regards to what they call the crop sensor. Now, with the crop sensor, it came, became blatantly obvious that the, the, the right megapixel size was between this range of 14 and 20. So be a little bit mindful of that when you're actually out there looking for your camera again with regards to the megapixels. Megapixels is not the be all and end all. And also, when you look at your smaller cameras, if you're looking at something along the lines of a small compact camera with a sensor which is not much bigger than the little fingernail, um, pushing around about 16 or 18 or 20 and 24 megapixels, you are going to uh, more light, more noise concern and problems down the line. Now, the final product from these cameras is obviously the printed product. Um, it's OK looking at them on the screen because the screen makes an obviously a, um, a, a straight adaptation of the image. But when you come to print, that's when you have a, a, a sort of a, a lock off, basically, where these cameras with regards to the size of the sensor with the number of pixels produces the maximum size of print. Now, we're getting a little bit deep here, but I'd just like to say one thing. What I have found just recently, there's a particular program out there called Resize, which you can get uh, on one software, Resize, which really does allow you to make some very decent prints from smaller sensored size cameras. I, in actual fact, have made an A3 print from an iPhone image, uh, and their sensors are extremely small. So it's, it's a bit of a minefield. I don't want to go into too much tech. tech technical part of it for, uh, for you at this at this stage especially in workshop number two but i thought it was worthwhile mentioning to you that cameras do come with different megapixel sizes and i think you should be looking for that 14 to 20 range for your camera is ideal so that was that about the sensor size and as i say we'll be talking more about that later on um, but I thought really the main part of the, the show tonight, I want to talk to you about inspiration, where you would be looking to get your inspiration from. Now, for me, uh, my particular genre of photography that I like to follow is street photography, and I also like to do city architectural type work. So a lot of my inspiration has actually come through those particular lines. But um, you've obviously got some great photographers in the landscape field, in the macro field not to mention the cool street and sports even sports photography as well and of course the landscape uh, photographers of um, of this nature so what we do is i'll go to screen share and show you my pinterest site for um my inspirations and uh <clears throat> hopefully some of these will be of interest to you as well i've just got to uh switch over to my 
Pinterest site. Now you can actual fact set up, go to Pinterest.com and, and start creating your own boards. But as you can see, this one, uh, my call sign on Pinterest is Griffo Art. And <clears throat> this is my inspiration board. These are photographs which I've found on the website of photographers, which I really do enjoy looking at their work. And I think it's very, very important that you look at other photographers' work and get ideas and, and get the feeling of what they're trying to say in their work. Let's look at uh, Jay Maisel to start off with. Jay Maisel, a photographer from New York. And the way he, in actual fact, composes his images. And now, for those that have been to Pizza, you automatically would think, I want to get right back and get the full leaning of the tower. And yeah, fine, that's that's perfectly acceptable. That's, that's the, the classic travel shot. But here you can see Jay has concentrated on the base of the tower. He shows that it's leaning which obviously uh, we know that it does. But the intriguing thing about this, he's also caught the card seller in the bottom left-hand corner there leaning as well. So this really is a classic case, case sorry, of observation. Here, again, don't walk. Two guys, total silhouette against a really rich red background. It's just pure black and red. Uh, just a little smidge of white on the collar there. But again, observation, picking out the two guys, and he's got the, the corners being used there by the, the silhouettes of the sidewalk sign and the, uh, and the people in the left-hand corner. Now, Jay Maisel now switches to a landscape where he uses the colour. Um, yeah, okay, these colours may well have been saturated. Um, that doesn't really matter. It's what he's looking to show, the stark blue sky, clear yellow uh, field there and a darker base giving a sort of a solidity the base to the photograph so that's jay mazel for one of description there's one other funny one which i just wanted to show you this is typical of jay spotting something happening on the streets of new york the cab driver taking a quick break i thought that was a uh, hot cabbie i thought that was a great uh, great image to to show you let's move on let's come out of jay mazel let's walk on to um a in my, in, in, uh, in, pre, in my uh, opinion, a great photographer, Michael Kenner. Michael Kenner, renowned for his mono work and his simplistic, minimalistic type style. All done on a film camera using the Hasselblad medium format camera. And really, to be quite honest with you, Michael Kenner's work goes uh, to the top of the tree in my book with the, his, uh, the way that he captures the atmosphere of the images uh, that he's looking to portray. A very successful photographer, loads of books available, and to be quite honest with you, quite reasonably priced, but you can find his work on his website. And I think his work is just outstanding. Simplicity, minimalistic. And then we come to a photographer called Fan Ho. Not uh, that well known, but again, um, using angle, line, directing you to that lady standing up against the column there, light and shadow and um, uh, of his work there. Um, very minimalistic, very almost plain apart from that, that uh, texture on the wall. But a great uh, photographer to look at. One photographer, in actual fact, who I like to look at his work, he is a is Thomas Hawke. Thomas Hawke is set himself a target of uh, showing one million photographs on all social network. He's got a long, long way to go, but he produces some very sort of observational type work, and he really does work hard on his editing um, in his uh, uh, in his studio after he's been out shooting, and he and he shoots a lot. He's always taking photographs. So that's Thomas Hawke. One of the old time photographers, you probably have heard of her, Bernice Abbott. She worked a lot in New York, especially with the city scenes and the skyscrapers. Beautiful work by Bernice Abbott. 
this photograph here is by a favourite lifestyle photographer of mine, Alex Lambrex, based in uh, based in the UK. And Alex has this ability to catch lifestyle in a sort of street life way. Um, very a great work does a lot of work for magazines and that sort of stuff uh, on, the, on the lines of fashion and lifestyle that's the <clears throat> photograph of by david bailey and the reason i've put david in is to show you really the way he sets himself up in his composition i've got to be honest with you it's only until recently that i've found david bailey and, and really got into looking at his work outstanding outstanding work Let's see if i can find another one of david's here <clears throat> jane jimpton that uh, basically set everything off going for both of them in terms of the model a photographer which you're probably not aware of um which in actual fact does take some getting used to i've only got one image here because it is the infamous image that he created and it's Daido Moriyama and Daido Moriyama a Japanese photographer loads of books available of his work but he works on composition he works on double exposure he works on street scenes and he works with the very minimalist of equipment film camera compact camera walking around taking photographs of the street now when you first see his work you'll first immediately come to the conclusion that a lot of it is not in focus but that creates his style so total inspiration there Dido Moriyama gonna finish up with two more street photographers um, uh, we go down to William, uh, not William Klein, sorry. Is Hengi Coent Joro, I think you pronounce it. He's going to be on my show in a couple of weeks' time, so that may be interesting to look at. He's a fantastic photographer. Work that he's producing is really quite amazing. There's another shot by Hengi. Hengi. And another one final image I want to show you final several images images by my all-time favorite soul lighter Soul was a photographer in New York and specialized eventually specialized in color photography in street street work um, just in actual fact got his his book of uh, black and white images and you can see how he was developing into this style <clears throat> i'm going to be talking more about soul lighter at a later a later um workshop when we talk about the the rules of photography you know, the rule the, the rule of thirds and composition and like because there's some very interesting pointers there with regards to soul's work so one more image, maybe there's another one here. You can see one of my cursor is another one, Dido Moriyama. He effectively is a poster, but he's taken the image and it's uh, he's just used the uh, the way the poster has been torn to create an image. So there are some of my photographers which I would call my inspiration and this is my work so i thought i'd show you some of my work uh, someone very kindly made a suggestion that i should show my work and uh, so here we go um this is my my street and there's a little bit of arty work in here as well this is my 500 px uh website um this image taken of the young lad walking through uh manchester uh, high street when I was up there to see uh, the Eng England playing the rugby. Again, another shot take. And this is part of my uh, project, which I'm doing at the moment, called uh, Life at 1 15th of a Second. And this fellow was just standing outside the escalator, handing out 
some kind of voucher and you can see all the other people moving around him another image here of in actual fact is uh, collecting money as you can see the tin on the floor so he's one of these static um people and uh, you can see the other guys walking around one thing you spot when you do this sort of work it's amazing one foot is always stationary another shot the blur doesn't worry me uh, i'm looking for movement uh I, in my street images, I'm, I'm looking for some form of a movement by the, either the passerby or the, or the traffic. There's some uh, city uh, scapes that I took uh, down at uh, London, close to Tower Bridge. And finally, another one, gentleman coming down the steps, Holden Viaduct. Again, I'm showing him moving uh, <clears throat> down the steps rather than a static image if I'd chosen a faster shutter speed. One final image to show you. Um, this is the Palladium down at um, the Pavilion, sorry, not the Palladium, uh, the Pavilion down at Brighton. I just wanted to show it really shimmering in what was probably one of the hottest days of last summer. So the reason for me showing you that really on and workshop number two was really to give you an idea of looking into different genres, which you could, uh, you know, uh, find yourself getting involved with. Street photography is obviously a, a, a very easy one for you to get involved with it, it, because we live so close to a, uh, our local towns and obviously in, in uh, London. Um, so it, it le lends ourselves to jump on the train and just walk along South Bank there and take some images of, of, of the passers-by or something that catches catches your eye. It may be one of the buskers or uh, or any such, any such scene. Um, we'll come onto street photography at another workshop because there are certain elements there which a number of people will probably want to talk about uh, taking street portraits for instance is one uh, one aspect how do you approach someone um and it is difficult uh, i find it still difficult to this day to do it but once you've done one or two on a day you find that it's, there's no real major hassles to ask again and to be quite honest with you in london i'm finding these days people are quite happy to stop and and have their photograph taken i think i've only been turned down two or three times in the uh, many times that i've uh, taken photographs covent garden is another area where you may want to consider walking about to to do some street photography work then of course you've got the cityscapes where you can go up to london and london now as regards to its skyline is is becoming very very dynamic in its view some beautiful buildings some wonderful architecture there and and that in itself is is uh is a great place to to visit you can either go up to london along the city there again on the south bank or get yourself down to canary wharf where you've got some wonderful areas there landscape photography obviously if you're close to where i live which is in bromley kent we're right on the on the outskirts really of the countryside so there's no reason why we can't get in the cars and drive out it's just a question whether you want to get up early in the morning to catch the uh the good light as they as they like to term it the uh <clears throat> the uh, the early morning photographs or the late at night uh, sunsets which the landscapers love to do it's uh, horses for courses on that on basically as you want <clears throat> then of course is sports photography now <clears throat> a lot of uh, uh, male photographers will probably lean more towards going to see some sports car racing or motorcycle racing and that's when we talked about the lens and here is the 1855 fitted to the fuji here but of course if you are going to want to specialize or want to concentrate your work on um, you may want to get a, a bigger lens like a 70 300 although i would hasten to add i i think that's a a big step to take so early into your uh, into the start of your hobby get to know your camera and the limitations of what your lens can do and and effectively you will learn more as you go on so those are the the the, spe the specific genres that i get involved with 
and um, uh, hopefully that's helped you out to start off with. I think probably the next stage in our workshops will be to talk about the different uh, the modes of, of the camera. Obviously, a lot of you would, and I would stress now, get your camera and start taking some photographs, even if it's just around your house, um, using, yeah, put it into the P mode, into the program mode or the automatic mode, whichever is, and, and just take some images and get used to focusing and trying uh, out different angles and, and, and objectives. We'll come on to working with different modes on the camera, aperture priority, shutter priority, uh, and that, uh, that uh, type of thing added along with bracketing. And of course, the other option which you can have with these cameras now, the, uh, the multiple shooting, either multiple exposures or multiple shooting in, in a sort of like a five or seven string of shots to pick the best one. So we'll be talking uh, about that at a later stage. So that's really suffice to say for this particular episode, it really was a, uh, a workshop on my inspirations and to help you dis discover maybe your inspirations and where you'll get your interest. So please go on the website, set yourself up. This is your homework. <laughs> set yourself up a little Pinterest site and uh, sign up for a Pinterest and create some boards and create some inspirations and really look through this work that you're looking at. You'll come across some great photographers out there, old and new. Um, the majority I've shown you today are all present day photographers um, still living to this day. I haven't touched on the old classics of Brassai and Henri Cartier-Bresson and, and Ansel Adams, which you can learn so much from. But I've got those books which I'll be showing you. So that brings me neatly to the next stage, which I always, I'm going to show you a book a week or book an episode because there won't be a show next week uh, because it'll be a photography live and uncut interview. But this week, my book uh, reference or uh, to you is Jay Maisel's Light Jester and Color Book. This really is a fantastic reference book for you to look at. I'm going to hold these up. I haven't got the cameras angled up. But you can see basically from the style of the book is that he does an image and then on the other page, which is that side, he does some text as regards to what he's looking to portray for you. It is a wonderful book available in Amazon. It's a new book. It's only been out about six months, if that. And really, just take a look at the, the work that this, uh, this photographer from New York has done and created. He is an amazing photographer. There's street in here. There's portraits in here. There's landscapes. The abstracts as well, abstract photography everything that you could possibly want to look at but what in actual fact does unlike it just being a retrospective type book in actual fact gives you a little bit of text on the left on the on the left hand side of the image to tell you exactly what he was looking to uh, create when he saw and observed the the image that he was going to take so jay mazel light jester and color i couldn't recommend it more highly like my other book last week you're going to get a book every time which i will always highly recommend i thoroughly enjoy my uh, photography books so i hope you've enjoyed this show please uh, thank you so much indeed for watching i've had some live viewers which has been great please uh, keep in touch with me send me some uh, send me some questions or uh, comments uh, good or bad because i'll only improve if i hear what's being said out there Subscribe to me on uh, YouTube, uh, Photography Live and Uncut, and uh, we'll, we can go further from there on, on, that, uh, on, on that side of things. Um, get yourself a Pinterest site, get that organized and, and uh, build your photographs uh, and your inspirations for people uh, that you really do enjoy looking at their work. Uh, thanks again for watching. Um, there won't be a show next week, a workshop next week. We won the week after, which is around about the uh, 20, uh, 28th, something like that, the date. I can't remember, but I will be posting that up. And uh, suffice to say, thanks again for watching and uh, look forward to uh, talking to you again. Thank you. Bye for now.